Are you on double A's down here on this thing? Would you sit so I can... Oh, sit, yes. <laughs> Keep me still. Yeah. You don't want to track me? No, I'm Okay. So you don't want to... You want to tell us who you are and then go? Yes, my name is Miles Cox. I'm uh, the second son of Sandra Cox, who is the first daughter and last of Leela and Alvin Allison. And Leela was the number one daughter, am I correct? and the third child. And uh, she's not with us any longer, but we have the good fortune to have some stories that she wrote down uh, that I'll try and get through. I thought I was gonna do a pretty good job, but uh, I know mom couldn't do it. Uh, I really love the way uh, Leela told a story whenever she would tell a story. Uh, they would seem to not have a beginning and middle and end they just go and stop and uh, well yeah I know I know so I'm, it's, it's wasn't good script writing but whenever you sit there and it, it, it the ceasing of the telling of the story would take it kind of by surprise to kind of make you reflect on what you said and you end up kind of going you know actually that's pretty neat uh, this one is called the woodpile by Leela uh, when we lived in Crosbyton we lived in a two-room house that had been built by my father and his brother. That would be Carl Walker, right? And his brother. Uh, it Andy stood... Walker, and his brother was Andy Walker. So Carl and Andy built this house, and they lived there in Crosbyton, and it stood 12 or 18 inches off the ground, right, about like that, uh, because it was in a low area, and the elevation was to prevent flooding during flash flooding. Uh, my mother... What Laura had three children already and was ready to give birth again. Uh, she wasn't getting around too well at this point. Uh, my two brothers, Bernice and Alvin, were playing outside. We had a large wood pile that they loved to climb. My mother heard Alvin call to her. He was the youngest of the two brothers. When she went back out to check on him, Bernice had disappeared and Alvin was on top of the wood pile and couldn't get down. She tried to reach him, but every time she would step on a log, it would roll. Being very pregnant, she was afraid she'd fall and injure the baby. So while standing there trying to figure out a safe way to get the child down, he said, Mommy, uh, you could just burn the logs. Then, <laughs> then they'll get smaller and I can climb down. Uh, so Bernus appeared and then uh, the mother held the logs while he climbed. While uh, Bernus finally came back around and held the log so Alvin could get down. That's the story there. I guess some of these are, uh, these are pretty short. I'll go through these, uh, a couple of these real quick. Grandma Hager. Oh, huh? Wow, very cool. Okay, Grandma Hager came to our house to visit. Oh, this is called Grandma's Hat. Grandma Hager came to, oh, you know the story. I wrote it. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Grandma Hager came to the house to visit. She wore a beautiful black hat with purple flowers on it. Grandma always wore pretty clothes and always carried a lot of medicine when she came to visit. As she came into our house, Mama said, Miss Hager, that is a beautiful hat. And Grandma said, if you didn't have so many children, you could have a hat like this. <laughs> nice lady. Uh, then she went into the bedroom Mom had prepared for. Her. She placed her hat and a big jar of Vicks Sav on the dresser. Do you know what Vicks Sav is? Yes. Uh, uh, huh? Uh, it's, it gets hot when you rub it on, doesn't it? Yeah. Or it's, yeah, you put it on your chest when you're uh, uh, congested. So, uh, can you tell where this story is going already? Yeah. Uh, so Grandma hurt Mama's feelings so badly that when she left the room, Mama sat down with her hands over her face and cried. I got mad at Grandma for hurting Mama, so when she left the room, I got the hat and the Vicks salve and took it into another room where I greased the hat good with the salve. <laughs> I had Fuzzy to help me. Fuzzy, Fuzzy always did everything I told him to. I like that. <laughs> When Grandma found her hat, she told Papa, Carly, you need to just blister those kids. 
Fuzzy and I hit out. <clears throat> I taught Fuzzy all the curse words I knew, and I, I used all of them to cuss Grandma. Mama had a way of knowing when we had done something bad. She called us to come into the house. She sat us down to reprimand us. In her soft voice that hurt worse than a blistering, she told us that she knew we'd been using bad, bad words. She said, you know that nice boys and girls don't use words like that. I didn't say anything, but little old Fuzzy looked at Mama innocently and said, I know, Mama. So I kind of I kind of think that's funny that uh, the kids got in trouble for using the bad words, but not for saying, <laughs> Just having the hat. <laughs> you want a couple more? Yeah. There's three more in this one page. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the kittens. We were living in Crosbyton. Mama had a cat with several kittens. Uh, in the small house where we lived, Mama would sometimes accidentally step on a kitten. Wow. Uh, the kitten would let out a nerve-wracking noise. One day, one of the kittens got underfoot and was stepped on and let out a loud screeching noise. And Mama said, I better kill these cats before they kill me. Fuzzy took her statement literally. When no one was around, he gathered up the kittens and took them to the barn and killed them. Oh, man. <laughs> Maybe I should have read this one before I went... <laughs> He then told Mama that she wouldn't have to worry about killing the kittens because he had done it for her. She loved the cat so much she said, Oh, honey, you didn't. He assured her, Yeah, he did. So she paused for a moment and said, We'll just never mention this again. <laughs> However, little tussle-headed Jimmy would often tease Fuzzy by saying, Here, kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Here's one, two paragraphs, Ambitious Jim. As the oldest daughter, it was necessary that I help mother with the younger children. One evening, as the family sat around the dinner table eating cornbread and milk, Jimmy spoke up. If I work real hard and get enough money to buy my own farm, will Leela be my landlord? <laughs> uh, thoughts of childhood. Uh, I could slice meat and peel a dishpan of potatoes when I was five years old. Mama would then slice the potatoes and fry them. That was one of our most favorite meals, meat and potatoes. Very good. Thank you. Mm. Yes.